welcome back to our YouTube channel and guess what time it is it is time to announce the winner to our last giveaway and we saw you guys work really really hard but we can only have one winner this time and the winner is let me see um, I'm not gonna say your last name because I don't want to butcher it so I'm gonna say your first name and I'll have your um, name on the bottom as well so the winner is a big Victoria Congratulations to you Victoria and for the one that did not win don't worry guess what we're gonna do another giveaway right now and same thing as last time to enter the giveaway all you gotta do is make sure you subscribe to our channel like the video and leave a comment down below but this time make sure you guys look for my question in the video and answer my question that's how you guys enter to the giveaway and make sure you guys do not forget to subscribe to our channel and um I'm wearing a fur coat, but it's really not that cold in California, so it's just for looks. <laughs> All right, guys, guess what we're doing today? We are gonna do some Valentine's nails again because, like I said, we are way ahead of time, so we are gonna do some more Valentine's nails, and um, this one will be kind of simple and super easy. Anyways, guys, check it out. Hey guys, we're gonna start out with, of course, my new favorite tips, uh, the not polished, non curved coffin tips. And um, you know how I like to glue on my nails, drop one little drop right in the middle of the nails. And when we press down the tip, the nail, the glue actually gonna spread across the nail. And this is how we measure our length is cuticle to cuticle, and then we trim it across to make sure it's even. And for the pinky, I kind of like eyeball it pretty much, and it could be a little bit shorter, okay? And um, pre shape the nails. For people that just start out, just start out doing nails, do pre-shape the nails. It'll, it'll make your application a lot more cleaner. And we're going to use the tornado bit and we're going to go in and blend the nail tip into the nail plate. Make sure we don't overly do it and thin out the client's nail. Um, this is a duster tool that I like to use because I don't actually have a duster. I don't know why. So this is cute little tools I use to clean the dust off now. And um, I want to show you guys the not pop. I never show you guys this, but I'm using the Not Polished EMA Medium Set-In Monomer. It's the perfect consistency for me because it's not too, um, it doesn't dry too slow. It doesn't dry too fast. Of course, if the weather is super cold, then your products will tend to run a little bit more. Or if the um, weather is super hot, then your product will tend to get hard pretty fast. So do keep that in mind when you guys are working with acrylic powder um, that the, um, the consistency of the product tends to change along with the weather okay so adjust yourself accordingly to the weather um then um it's just kind of like the basic understanding of the um liquid to powder ratio as well yeah, the weather has a lot to do with it too all right make sure you know that i always always um shape my nails with my brush when the product is wet you see how look how straight across that because the reason why we do this is because um when the product is wet it's still mold moldable <laughs> is that a word you still can mold it into the shape that you're going for and if, therefore it's going to save, save you a lot of time um, shaping so when it's wet make sure you spend that little extra like 30 second molding the product into the shape right and not make it super bulky and make sure we clean all the edges anything that's spilling over we got to clean it and um again second bead first bead always 75 to 80 percent of the nails and then work it work it work it all the way down and i'm gonna mention something if you guys are trying to build your apex a strong apex so when you apply on your first bead you know naturally we're trying to blend in the um the bead into the nail bed right the top of the bead into the nail bed like um example like how we do ombre we blend in that part into the nail and then apply our second bead so no you wouldn't do that you just apply your first bead on and keep it pretty bulky at where the um where you first lay the bead does that make sense and then now you apply on your second B, then you will instantly have that apex where that, um, where you place the B at. So uh, when you first apply, so let me explain it again, <laughs> just to make sure. When you apply, apply your first bead, naturally we will try to put on the bead, blend the uh, bead into the nail bed, like how you would do, like put on your bead 
and blend it right there like blend it into the cuticles right i mean to the nail bed like how you would do ombre but when you're doing a solid color and you're trying to build your apex don't try to blend that part and let leave it kind of bulky right there put it on the bead leave it kind of bulky right leave it bulky don't blend the bead into the the nail plate does that make sense okay i hope that makes sense and then you when you apply on your second bead it will it will give you that instant apex right away all right guys um again make sure we mold the nail into the shape very nicely okay so it will save us a lot of time um shaping later okay now apply on the second bead again right there and then drag it down but don't drag it all the way from the top down because we don't want to drag all the product off the nails okay so only in the middle of the bead right there in the middle down and down and you can kind of see how the shape looks look at this all right um i'm using guess what i'm using the five in one fine bit today this is the five in one not the cross cut but a super cut today and i actually really 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 like it and it comes in red so that's a bonus and still a safety bit but i absolutely love this guy i think this might be my new favorite bit it's just my five and one cross bit actually got dull and then i grabbed this one by accident i'm like shoot i really like this one so i this is my new favorite bit as well <laughs> i'm a creature of habit so i'm gonna show you how to shape right divide it in three parts of course you're never gonna paint over your client's nail but i'm painting it over so you can see first part second part and third part so the first part and the third part you see let me see it let me show you guys so the f make sure we clean the bottom of the nails as well they kind of slipping out okay so the first part right there just tape in the first part and then work on to your second part and then i work down your third part is towards the tip of the nail there you go so make sure we divide the nails in three parts when we shape right always divide it in three parts and then i'm gonna go now that the shape is done i'm gonna go in with my hand file actually give it one final smooth it's kind of like hand filing the whole nail one it's kind of like a quick touch the hand filing will actually get your nails a more even in spots that you couldn't get with your dremel so i'm just gonna go in with a hand filing a little bit like that so that's again that's my another new technique that i've been doing a lot i do finish off with the hand filing over the top of the nail just to make sure it's nice and smooth you can see how nice and even this is you see just enough apex we don't want to build a mountain of apex as well and hey, that's too much but just nice enough curve right there and then um give it a nice little hand file at the end and again um same thing for the pre-shaping of course i always use my um, bit to pre-shape the nails on the right hand side i go kind of downward like that and a little bit up and then smooth it across on the left hand side i go downward like this this i go upward and then smooth out the top area and then the um, tip of the nail i hardly um okay um no i don't know what i was gonna say again you see it doesn't look like i'm when i'm shaping it doesn't look like I'm, sh I'm i'm dividing the nails in three three parts but i'm always shaping my nails in three parts like first part second part third part like how i mentioned it how i do it on my pinky does that make sense guys i hope it makes sense and uh i know i sound super stuffy right now and i assure you guys that um it's only allergies my um my eyes has been watery all day and one of my nostrils is like clock up and i um it's hard to breathe that's it taste smell everything's still there <laughs> so i'm gonna show you guys the fun shape right that looks good the shape looks good and guess what i'm just gonna dust it off and you can see how the nail is still a little rough from me hand filing on top of it, right? You can see it's kind of rough because the um, the hand file is it's always give you that rough finish. But I'm not going to buff it out. You know why? Because as I always mentioned, when I do nail art, I always go in with a matte top coat. You see, I'm going to leave this rough. You see how it's kind of rough from the hand filing? Yeah, 
rough from the hand filing i'm i'm gonna i'm not gonna buff it out i'm gonna go in with a thin layer of matte top coat and i always mention matte top coat give me a really really nice and smooth surface for me to paint on my nail art so my line can be super straight so it becomes like a habit that i always do i always when i know i'm doing nail art i always go in with a thin thin layer of matte top coat and i'm not gonna paint it all the way to the cuticles either i, I leave like a little gap at the cuticle so it doesn't get too thick around the cuticle yet right Thin layer of matte top coat, clean off the edges, and then we're gonna stick it under the uh, under the UV lights for about thirty seconds. Is usually is a good amount of time, and then I'm, this is my new one of my favorite color, Redemption. This is from the Gel Liner Art Collection, and um, we're gonna do the deep V one. You hold all the way down. You see that? You want to create a straight line, one line all the way down. I never. When I'm doing a straight line, I never pick up my brush too many times. And then your lines become um, jagged, okay? So hold your brush and then all the way. Oops. <laughs> kind of move out of the way. Okay. All the way down. You see that? One straight line. You see that I did not lift up my brush too much. The more... the When you're doing a straight line, when you lift up your brush too much, too many times, your lines, it's not going to be straight, right? It's going to be like jagged. So remember, one straight line all the way down. You see that? I, I think when I first started learning how to do straight lines, I um I held my breath a lot. So uh, it's very understandable if you guys hold your breath when you guys do your line. This is the only way I do the deep French because I try the other ways. <laughs> it did not work for me, guys. I tried all the easy ways that people, you know, have to make the whole thing map out. Like you do the X and then you do the cross and you finish it. It doesn't work out for me. This is the only way that I do the deep French and I find it very... um. It's easy for me to do it, but it could be harder for some people. But I find like def doing deep French any other way is hard for me as well. So it's, it's it's not like I can show you how I do it, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do what I do. You can find what works for you, right? So um, this is what works for me. And this is what worked for me right here. One side all the way down and I kind of hold on all the way down and i kind of scoop it halfway you see that and now i connect the halfway and reverse it upward you see that's how i do my french and it works out perfectly for me every time and then one line down and i always it doesn't matter if i have a gel polish that's the same color as this i will always use the gel liner art brush to fill in my french or my v or whatever i feel like i get more of a smooth uh, more full coverage with the liner art brush the thinner brush i don't know why smoother more coverage for me so i'm just gonna color it in like that you see and again one line straight down and make sure oh and another thing is this is how you keep the shape of the nails when you paint on your gel polish right i'm gonna do um this eye first and then i'm gonna show you guys one line all the way down all the way down you see that i didn't lift up my brush too many times i know i see some people when they paint they constantly lifting up the brush especially when they paint lines so it come out all jagged okay look i'm gonna use my line art brush and just follow directly along side the nail you see that i'm not gonna over paint it but just exactly amount so that way the shape of the nail is not um, ruined and i'm using this paint from the general liner art collection as well i'm going to dilute it down with um a white polish so um i can have a lighter pink so just because uh, you know there's 12 colors in the gel liner art does not mean you're stuck with 12 colors you got a ton of options oh so cheating with the butterflies i'm using the transfer foil gel make sure we cure it for 30 seconds 30 se i mean 60 seconds okay over cure it cure it for 60 seconds and these foil are from amazon is um, um butterfly foils once that is cured we stick on our butterflies and we're gonna stick on a butterflies like this and we're gonna peel it slowly make sure make sure it's all stuck on there so this is a transfer gel i use from not polished transfer gel you see how that it transferred the whole butterfly over and then now we're just gonna do our little hearts on it cute little hearts so I tried to do the hearts with the uh, dot and tools. It didn't. It didn't work out for me. I feel like this is the easier way for me to actually use the brush. And again, I I've seen videos that people use a dot and tool to make hearts, and it looks super easy. And when I try to do it, it looks very very round and weird. So uh, I'm gonna use my art brush to paint on my um, hearts. 
and um you guys not gonna believe it but guess what i have a dot and tool today <laughs> i'll make all my cute little um polka dots in it oh so what i said is um we're gonna cheat a little bit with the butterflies instead of doing completely 100 percent hand painting design we're kind of cheating okay i'm gonna show you guys in a minute look i'm gonna paint it all look one stroke all the way down you see i did not lift up my brush and you see how straight that line came out so one long stroke learn you guys want to do artwork that's super straight keep one oh i mess up one long stroke you see that and then just one long stroke don't lift it up pull it all the way down and then all the way down and then same thing for the white so i'm using the gel liner art okay guys one long stroke and if some part is thinner or or, or, or a thicker you can go in and kind of kind of fan it out a little bit if you want but this is how you get straight lines one hold that hole one long stroke you see that i do not lift up my brush at all don't lift it up don't lift it up pull it all the way there you go so now once we have the outline of the butterflies i'm gonna go in with a black gel polish and actually draw on my butterflies see i know the eat i mean hand painting butterflies off is fun and all but sometimes it can be a little time consuming but look once you have the butterflies down already it's kind of like tracing over it and um i mean the transfer foil looks good by itself but i feel like when you add in your actual like a little bit of um gel polish and paint over the design it, it gives more it give it more of a like a hand painted look right but we kind of cheat it so but nobody has to know <laughs> i mean they might know but anytime your clients want butterflies and they want hand painting butterflies say hey can we cheat a little bit i can hand paint half of the butterfly and the other half is foil but it's gonna look good regardless right and of course we're gonna give it some little antenna right there see now look look at that it looks like hand painting butterflies right it's like why were it hard when we could work smart <laughs> i mean i'm not saying don't learn how to hand paint of course always learn how to hand paint you want to be able to do multiple different things right you don't want to just keep tracing butterflies but i mean this is a cool technique again give a cute little antenna and then go in with the white dotting tool i can't believe i have a dotting tools guy usually i use uh my brush or the tip of my scissor and make yeah dotting tool is so much easier i just never get it because too lazy i guess all right see look doesn't this look so much cuter this give you like a more of like hand painting vibes right so super quick super easy and then I'm going to go over it with the matted top coat. I love matte finish. And uh, for anybody who is struggling with your rhinestone last in, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of what we got for you guys. Okay, so I'm going to go in with the matted top coat on all the nails. Anytime I'm doing um, rhinestone, I like to finish it last like this. Except for if it's matte. If it's shiny, then no. But if it's matte, I'm going to go I'm gonna go in with a matted top coat. Cure for 30 seconds. And you see now it's matte. I'm going to use the super diamond glue gel. Put a big drop for big rhinestone, small drop for small rhinestone. Because if you use a small drop for a big rhinestone, it's not going to hold. And if you use um, a, a small, a big drop for a small stone, then it's just become too much. So make sure you um, know how much of the rhinestone gel to use for each rhinestone, right? So make sure you use correct amount for the correct side as well so that's the first step and once that's done we're going to cure it under the light for 30 seconds once it's cured i'm going to use a crystal sealer from not polish as well we're going to go in and seal all the edges like that make sure we seal it nice and good this way it can hold your stones in place better and there you go guys that's how you do it for cute valentine's nails and make sure if you guys like this video give us a thumb up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel i'll see you guys like <laughs> i'll see you guys next time